Hi there, I'm Dr. Victoria Cloud and I'm here to explain some accounting. Now in this worked example, uh, we're looking at accounting for uh, some building and this particular building, we have a choice to account for it after initially recording it in accordance with IFRS. We could either continue with the cost model or we can switch to the revaluation model. This is quite a stylized uh, example, as you'll see, because we have the building being revalued every year. Now, for a real company, that doesn't have to happen. A real company could be, choose to revalue every two years, five years, 10 years. So just think about it as it's very compressed period. So we can see what's happening. Maybe this was actually a 30 year period and we're just compressing it down into this example. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video for the template and also of the solution so you can check your workings. So we start off in year zero and we purchase a building for 300,000 at the 31st of December. And we're also told that this building had a zero residual value and a 10 year useful life at purchase. So we're going to start off by looking at the cost method. So the initial carrying amount is 300,000 and we record the journal entry of debit building 300,000 and credit cash 300,000. Then we come along in year two and we're told by an independent valuer that the market value is, has increased to 360,000. So under the cost method, we can't record any increases over and above the original book value. We're only concerned if the carrying amount falls below that market value, in which case we would need to record impairment. So we calculate our carrying amount. We're going to record depreciation expense. It's a straight line method, so 300,000 divided by 10 years. So we're going to debit depreciation expense 30,000 and credit accumulated depreciation 30,000. So 300,000 minus 30,000 gives us our new carrying amount of 270,000. And when we compare that 270,000, it's lower than the market value. So there's no reason to expect any impairment. Then we come along in year two and an independent valuer says that the market value has fallen to 280,000. So we can now calculate our carrying amount and it's once again 30,000 because it's a straight line depreciation over 10 years. So we debit depreciation expense 30,000 and credit accumulated depreciation 30,000. To calculate our new carrying amount, we take the 270,000 and minus 30,000. This gives us a carrying amount of 240,000. And this is lower than the market value, so there's no impairment. We come along then in year three and record the market value from the independent valuer of 175,000. So we need to calculate our carrying amount. And so we debit depreciation expense 30,000 and credit accumulated depreciation 30,000. So when we take the 240,000 from the previous step and we minus the 30,000, that gives us a carrying amount of 210,000. This is higher than the market value of 175,000. So this means that we have evidence of impairment. So what we need to do is to take that 210,000 and minus 175,000, which gives us 35,000 of our impairment that we've calculated. So we do another journal entry and debit loss on impairment, 35,000, and credit allowance for impairment, 35,000. We then come along in year four and we sell the building for 270,000 at the beginning of the year. So in the journal entry, we're going to debit cash 270,000. We're going to debit accumulated depreciation. We're gonna add up all of the previous depreciations. So from year one, year two, and year three, 30,000 in each. So that gives us a total of accumulated depreciation of 90,000. So we debit accumulated depreciation, 90,000 to remove that depreciation that we've been accumulating. We also want to close off the allowance for impairment account from the previous step. 
So we're going to debit allowance for impairment 35,000. So we're going to then credit the building for its original book value of 300,000. We compare the total of the debit side entries with the credit side entry to determine whether we have a gain or a loss on the sale. The sum of the debit side entries exceed the credit side entry of 300,000 for the building. That means that we had a gain on sale. So we're going to credit gain on sale for 95,000. We now compare this with the revaluation method. So the revaluation method does allow us to recognize both increases and decreases in the market value of the building. We will continue to depreciate the building as per accounting standards, which there's a common misconception that revaluation means no depreciation, but in fact, the accounting standards tell us that we must continue to depreciate an asset even if we are revaluing it. So in year zero, we're going to record the transaction of purchasing the building for 300,000, just the same as in the cost method. So we're going to debit the building 300,000 and credit cash 300,000. So original carrying amount is 300,000. So year one, we're told by the independent valuer that the market value is 360,000. So our first step is to depreciate the building. So we're going to depreciate debit depreciation expense 30,000 and credit accumulated depreciation 30,000. Our next step is to write off the depreciation to the building. This is to determine the carrying amount. So we debit accumulated depreciation 30,000 and credit building 30,000. This means that we've written down the asset to a carrying amount of 270,000. Our next step is to compare the 270,000 to the, what the independent valuer says the building is worth. So we compare the carrying amount, 270,000, with the valuer's amount, 360,000. And it appears that we need to increase the value of the building. This is the first time we are doing a revaluation and it's an upwards revaluation. That means that we're going to send this revaluation to an equity account. That equity account is revaluation surplus. So we're going to debit building 90,000 and credit revaluation surplus 90,000, where that 90,000 is the difference between the valuer's amount, 360,000, minus the carrying amount prior to the revaluation, 270,000. Year two, we're told by an independent valuer that the market value is now 280,000. So we need to do the first step, record the depreciation expense. It's now at the higher uh, book value amount, 360,000, and we have a further nine years remaining. So we depreciate by 40,000. So debit depreciation expense, 40,000, and credit accumulated depreciation, 40,000. Next step is to write off the asset back down to its carrying amount. So we debit accumulated depreciation 40,000 and credit building 40,000. So we've now reduced this asset to its carrying amount. So that's 360,000 minus 40,000. And we then compare this to what the independent valuer says that the, the market value is 280,000. And it appears that we have to further reduce the asset down by 40,000 to be equal to the 280,000 market value. So we need to reduce that asset's valuation. In the previous step, we had an upward revaluation. This means that we need to reverse in the same place. So we sent that upwards revaluation to revaluation surplus. So what we're going to do is reduce that equity account by debiting revaluation surplus, 40,000, and crediting building 40,000. This results in the new carrying amount of 280,000. Then we come along to year three, and the independent valuer says that the market value is 175,000. So we're going to first step record depreciation Depreciation is recorded based on that 280,000 carrying amount. 
and the remaining years of useful life. So we debit depreciation expense 35,000 and credit accumulated depreciation 35,000. Our next step is to reduce that asset down to its carrying amount by writing off that depreciation. So we debit accumulated depreciation 35,000 and credit building 35,000. Our final step is now to compare that, that carrying, new carrying amount. So it would be the 280,000 minus 35,000. We compare that with what the market value is, 175,000. And what we find is we need to further reduce the market value of that, of that asset, the, the, its book value. We need to reduce that down by 70,000. So we need to do a reversal. So in revaluation surplus account, we still have 50,000. So we can reduce it down by 50,000. Once we've run out of the revaluation surplus account, we need to reduce by debiting a loss. And this would get reported in the income statement. So the journal entry for reducing the asset by 70,000, we debit revaluation surplus 50,000 debit the loss on revaluation 20,000 and credit building for 70,000. So our carrying amount is then reduced to in year three, 175,000. So year four, we come along and sell the building for 270,000. So we debit cash 270,000. We're going to credit the building for its book value that we've written it down to of 175,000. And so when we compare the cash, 270,000 minus building 175,000, it looks like we've got a gain on sale. So we credit gain on sale for 95,000. So in this particular example, we've looked at recording a building for its initial value. We've covered depreciation and we've compared the cost method with the revaluation method. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're interested in looking at accounting for other types of assets, I've got a video on land and comparing the cost model and the revaluation model. And if you're interested in a journal entries for disposal of a non-current asset, uh, check out my other video on looking at how do we account for the disposal of a motor vehicle? How do we determine if we have a gain or a loss? So thanks for watching this video.